can know the video, we can set the notation, and now we can actually get into the theory behind the one-way ANOVA. All right, so um, remember that we just left off saying that the total sum of squares equals the treatment sum of squares plus FSE. So if we want to, we can divide by a constant all the way across, and that's just fine. So um, we divide across by sigma squared. All right, so if you look at your book, Theorem 931, then it says that the total, sorry, the treatment sum of squares and FSE are independent. Okay, so if we look at this first piece and break that down, we're going to see that it's a chi-squared random variable with n minus one degrees of freedom. Similarly, if we look at FSE, that that's also, sorry, FSE divided by sigma squared, that's also a chi-squared random variable with m minus one degrees of freedom. All right, so this is a chi-squared random variable. This is a chi-squared random variable. And this and this are independent of each other. So if we remember back in our MGF days from last semester, if we, sorry, that's moment generating function. If we have a chi-squared random variable equals something plus a chi-squared random variable, then that's going to mean that this is also a chi-squared chi random variable. And remember the way that these work is that if we have chi-squared with however many degrees of freedom plus chi-squared with m minus one degrees of freedom, that equals chi-squared with n minus one degrees of freedom. So in other words, the degrees of freedom just add. So if this has n minus one degrees of freedom, and this has n minus one degrees of freedom, and this is chi-squared, then it's not a mystery how many degrees of freedom it has. We know that it's going to be n minus m degrees of freedom because we need n minus m plus n minus one to equal n minus one. All right, so under the null hypothesis, then this must be a chi-squared chi random variable with n minus m degrees of freedom. All right, so remember that this whole one-way ANOVA stuff, we're looking at comparing the variability within groups to the variability between groups. So let's start thinking about that variability within groups and the variability between groups. All right, so under the null hypothesis, the treatment sum of squares divided by sigma squared, we just said, is chi-squared distributed with n minus one degrees of freedom. Remember, if we have a chi-squared random variable and we want to get its mean, that's just going to be equal to the number of degrees of freedom that that chi-squared has. Okay, so we have n minus one degrees of freedom. So that means this random variable, FSE divided by sigma squared, that means that this has expectation m minus one. All right, m minus one, that's a constant. Sigma squared, that's a constant. So there's no harm done in moving these around. So we could have the expectation of FSE divided by m minus one, and that will equal sigma squared under the null hypothesis. So you might be tempted to say, okay, if we wanna estimate sigma squared, let's just take the treatment sum of squares and divide by m minus one. But this is not a good way to estimate our sigma squared because this all relies on the null hypothesis being true. So if it's not true, we're actually going to be overestimating sigma squared. All right, so now we know something about how this is distributed. Um, let's think now about the null hypothesis. Whether it's true or not, it doesn't matter. FSE divided by sigma squared is going to have a chi-squared random variable, um, is going to be a chi-squared random variable with n minus m degrees of freedom. So same sort of thing, if we take the expectation of this, it's going to have n minus m as its expectation. All right, so since this does not rely on the null hypothesis being true, we can use this MSE to um, estimate sigma squared and it will be an unbiased estimator. All right, so we know we have a chi-squared and a chi-squared and that they're independent. So it says our theorem in the book. And so if we take a chi-squared random variable and divide by another chi-squared random variable, as long as they're independent, then we're going to end up with an F random variable. All right, so that's exactly what we're going to do. So we said that MST has a chi-squared random variable, MSE has a chi-squared random variable, they're independent, so this, which will be our test statistic, will actually have an F distribution, 
with n minus 1 degrees of freedom and n minus n degrees of freedom under the null hypothesis. So this all relies on being under the null hypothesis because we need SST over sigma squared to have a chi-squared distribution. The only way that's going to happen is if the null hypothesis is true. So under the null hypothesis, here's our test statistic. It's going to have this distribution, S with m of minus 1 degrees of freedom and n minus n degrees of freedom. All right, so let's think about this logically. We said that if the variability between groups is much larger than the variability within groups, then we're going to want to reject the null hypothesis. So what's the variability between groups? That's that MST. And then the variability within groups, that's that MSE. So here we're looking at the variability between groups divided by the variability within groups. So if this quantity is a lot bigger than one, and a lot will be defined by our p-value, and if that quantity, that test statistic, is a lot bigger than one, then we're going to want to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so in other words, the bigger that test statistic gets, the more we're going to want to reject the null hypothesis. So our p-value is going to be the right tail. All right, so here's our S distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom and n minus n degrees of freedom. Here's our test statistic, MST over MSE, and then the p-value is going to be the area to the right of that test statistic. Because, like we said, as our test statistic gets larger and larger, we're going to want to reject the null hypothesis more and more. And so as we move further to the right with our test statistic, our p-value is going to be getting smaller and smaller, thus letting us have more and more evidence against the null hypothesis.